Hey, everybody. Welcome back. We're here with our first Cabral host call of the weekend. We'll be answering all of our community's questions, just like we do each and every weekend. Thank you once again for joining me here today. If you want to follow along with the questions that have come in, head on over to stephencabral.com forward slash 2276 for today's show. 2276 is today's show. We are going to dive right into the questions. So once again, thank you so much for joining me. If you're new to the show, this is where we answer all of the Ask Cabral questions that have come in. Uh, we are still working through February's questions. I know we're in May, uh, but we are in. Um, <laughs> we're still in February's questions. So I know we're going to get them all in. And, uh, and and the nice thing is I do answer them in order that they've come in. And so yours will always be answered. But if you answered, if you wrote in after, uh, let's see, February 25th, yours is still to come. All right, let's get started with the show. And let's see. Today's first question is from Michael. Michael says, hi, Dr. Wall. What could be the reason I can only handle one drop of biocidin? I've been taking biocidin for seven months. I can take other supplements at full dose, like NAC, 600 milligrams, uh, alpha lipoic acid, 600 milligrams, liposomal glutathione, 500 milligrams. I've tested positive for mold and H. pylori. What can I do to be able to take higher dosages? Okay, yeah, happy to help with this. Well, I mean, biocidin isn't wildly unique. It's a nice mixture of antifungals, uh, which can help with yeast, candida, mold, bacteria, et cetera. It can even help parasites. So it's a great product. Not, not saying that it's not. Fantastic. Obviously, we use it, right? <laughs> we use it as part of our protocols. Um, but there may be an ingredient, like there are some random ones in there, that you're sensitive to. Like you said, you can only handle one drop. So I don't know what happens, but you might either be having a Herxheimer reaction because it's killing more mold than you're ready for you, that your liver is ready essentially to handle, or it could simply be a sensitivity to that. So, you know, my recommendation is if you have some yeast overgrowth and bacterial overgrowth, you're probably going to want to do the CBO protocol with citricidal and the mastic gum first, okay? That's still going to get some mold, right? Absolutely. And then after that, see if you can handle it because the products in the CBO are also antifungals. You know, that's the nice thing about it. That's where I would start without a doubt. Uh, could simply be a sensitivity to one of those herbs. That's all it could be, especially if you're, you didn't name any other herbs, by the way. You only named sulfur-based, essentially, amino acids for phase two, and acetylcysteine, ALA, which is, is sulfur-based, and then glutathione, obviously sulfur-based. So you do find with those, that's for detox, that's actually, those aren't antimicrobials, though. So we'll have to see if it's a Herxheimer reaction or... Uh, it's a sensitivity to something inside that product. All right, hopefully that's helpful. Kelsey's up next. Kelsey says, hi, looking to build a house. How do you feel, feel about living near farming? There are corn crops on the edge of the property we are looking at, worried about potential harmful effects from spraying with chemicals. Thoughts, thank you. All right, yeah, there's two, well, there's three scenarios that I am uh, sensitive to purchasing a home there. The first one is golf courses. Sure, it's beautiful, no doubt about it, but I don't want to live on a golf course because they're spraying golf courses with lots of pesticides and I don't want to breathe that in and I want my kids to breathe it in. Number two, I don't want to live near a farm that isn't an organic farm. If it's an organic farm, I'll put some trees in between, but I don't want to be living near a non-organic farm where they're heavily sprayed. I mean, talk about neurotoxins, just you're breathing in, it should be illegal. It really should so again, you have to know the farm. You have to know if they're spraying. And the third is, I don't want to live near under power lines uh, or near a 5G tower or any tower. That's, that's basically it. So that's those are kind of my, my thoughts. Uh, so hopefully that's helpful. And, and again, everybody has to make their own decision. But I would definitely check that out. I also checked my, out my podcast I did with Jessica Green that... Um, goes through uh, clean home building. If you're thinking about building your own home, you can find that on um, stephencabral.com forward slash podcast under conversations with Cabral. All right, Gene is up next. Hi, Dr. Cabral. Thank you so much for all of your helpful information you share. You've been a huge help with a lot of things I've been struggling with. My question is, since I was young, elementary school, I've dealt with fast heart rate palpitations, lightheadedness intermittently that have become more and more frequent lately. I'm 33, otherwise healthy, was diagnosed with short PR interval, and um, 
The episodes are hard to determine the triggers for. Been on birth control, gave birth three years ago, said it's become more frequent since then. Got it. Uh, ran some labs. No longer estrogen dominant. Did the hair test. Actually found my sodium potassium both low. Potassium a lot higher than sodium. Calcium a lot higher than magnesium. So I'm going to work on that. I take D3, multivitamin C, and zinc as well. Any other direction you can point me in would be appreciated. Thank you very much. All right. So yeah, that's exactly where I was going. I'm glad that you mentioned that. This very well could be an electrolyte issue. Again, I'm not providing any medical diagnosis. I'm not even saying that you don't have some type of short PR interval. But again, what does that even mean, right? So there's an electrical impulse, there's electrical pulse-based issue with the heart seen on an EKG that might be off. All right, well, what's causing that? Like, that's the bottom line. Okay, you've had it maybe since you were lower, but at the same time, it's gotten worse, especially since um, giving birth. Well, most women, they are not following the prenatal, perinatal, postnatal-based nutrition, supplementation that we've known about for thousands of years to help rebuild the body. So you could be low in electrolytes, and you just did the hair test, and you showed yourself both low for sodium and potassium. I'm telling you right now, restore those electrolytes, daily nutritional support, uh, alkalizing vitamin C if you want, in your water, squeeze some lime, squeeze, put some uh, little Himalayan sea salt or Redmond's Real Salt, build back up your electrolytes. Um, yeah, lots of fruits and veggies, good enough protein in your diet. I mean, that that's really what we want to do. And again, I'm not saying that this is a cure-all, but you'd be surprised how many people uh, we've helped to live a healthy life, all right? Penny's up next. I know to consult my physician, but I'm 370 pounds, and I do have hypothyroid and taking meds for it, but I'd really like to start fat loss and want to know if I could get started and for how long one should stay on it. Thank you for any help and advice with this. Thank you. Okay. So Penny, again, I can't give you any medical advice, medical treatment plans, medical cures, but of course I want to help you. I've worked with many, many clients, 400 pounds, 500 pounds, and we've gotten just phenomenal results and, uh, and we would love to help you as well. I mean, there's just no doubt about it. So here's the thing. We typically start with the 21 day functional medicine detox. Uh, and then we do a flex meal once a week, which means you can eat anything that you want at one meal. Not the whole day, but one meal. And that kind of sets leptin and ghrelin. And then, so after 21 days, you have a flex meal of anything that you would like. It doesn't even have to be like poor foods if you don't want, but there has to be a good amount of carbohydrates in there just for one meal. And then you're going to move on to fatlosity. And fatlosity is going to help with, again, it's a weight loss system. Yes, it is. But it's literally the only system that I know that's backed by over 25 scientific studies. It works on thermogenesis. It works on cortisol. It works on thyroid. It works on sleep. It works on um, overall circulation. It works on healthy levels of glucose. Like, I mean, it's, it's, I mean, it's amazing. I mean, it really is. I mean, it's based on, it, this is what cutting edge functional medicine be, should be. What did Ayurvedic medicine say? What did TCM say? What does modern day, <clears throat> excuse me, medical science say? Can we combine those? Can we? Yes, you can. And we did that. And just phenomenal success stories. I mean, that's it. And it's guaranteed. So it's not like I'm trying to, again, I'm, I'm not in the business of selling things. I'm really not. I'm in the business of helping people get well. And Fatlocity is not a nutritional supplement. It's a system. It's nutrition. It's exercise and movement, right? It's Nutritional supplements, yes. It's a success mindset. It's the de-stress protocol. So we have to understand is that supplements are very, very effective when they are backed by science, but it's one part, right? You can't just take a supplement and pretend oh, you're just going to lose all the weight. No, that's not the way that works. And, and Penny, you know that as well. We've got the nutrition plan. We know that it's going to work. We've got the movement plan. You just start with walking, right? That's it. That's it. And then we work up a little bit of cardio. We work up some body weight exercises. Then we work up a little bit of weight training. Like that's how we, 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 it's all tiered and it works fantastically well. We've been doing this since the late nineties. Like this is, this is something that we, we specialize in. So hopefully that's helpful. Uh, Aisha is up next. Hi, hope you're having a great day. My daughter is turning four soon and she has about eight gray hairs on the top of her head. I've read this might be a copper deficiency issue. What should I be looking into? Some background. She tends to struggle with mild eczema and can sometimes get constipated. Also slightly unrelated to the hair, but who knows, her belly is slightly big and can get bloated after certain meals. Sorry to throw so much at you at once. Truly appreciate your help and guidance. I'm happy to help with this, Aisha. Without a doubt. I mean, again, if this is my own child, which by the way, I've, I've had, you know, my, my kids have had random health issues pop up and again, just was able to help them with it. So my youngest daughter, her belly was protruded as well. Turns out she had H. pylori. Had to fix that. 
fixed. So it's like these things can be dealt with. All right. So number no, without a doubt, Aisha, if it was, so I'm just going to give you what I would do if it was my daughter. Okay. You're going to run the starter kit, simple urine test. Any four-year-old can do it. You'll help. And the hair tissue mineral analysis. Hair tissue mineral analysis will look at heavy metals. It will look at copper like you just named. Copper could be an issue. Okay. It's going to look at zinc. It's going to look at copper. All right. So good. We've got that. And then we're running the candida metabolic and vitamins test to see if there's something going on with the gut and vitamin levels. Like it's honestly, it's that easy. If you were to run one more, you would run the IgG food sensitivity test. All these labs can be found at stephencabral.com forward slash labs. Once we get those results in, we will give you a plan on what to do. That's it. Now, if everything's good, everything's good. Because sometimes gray hairs, like even at a young age, just randomly, can be truly genetic that those follicles are not uh, producing or enabling melatonin, I'm sorry, melatonin, <laughs> it's been a long day, uh, melanin in the hair that gives it pigment, that gives it color, okay? So like, for example, I had a, a buddy, a good friend of mine in high school, he had a patch of gray hair on the back of his head, and he had it since he was young. The melanin never developed there. And so again, the goal is this, you run the labs, your daughter, four years old, perfectly healthy. There might be some digestive issues if we're seeing this for sure, but we're going to check it out. And if everything's good, everything's good. And it's just a couple random gray hairs that, that melanin just didn't grow there. All right. Uh, Alyssa's up next. Hi, Dr. Brawl. I have a question about HRV. I got an Apple watch for my 37th birthday. I noticed my HRV is very low. It averages the 30s, but it's sometimes as low as 15. I have a pretty well-controlled rheumatoid arthritis in Hashimoto's. Other than that, I'm pretty healthy and work out five times a week, eat a very clean diet, done a few of your protocols, DNS, CBO, lots of supplements and fixes, found on the big five. I've listened to pad past podcasts on it, but I'm worried since I already do most of the suggestions for raising it and it's still so low. Am I more unhealthy than I think? Oh, this is a good question. So here's the thing. Um, you want to look at your average. So if your average is in the 30s, that's not bad. The only reason why people think the 30s is bad is because they see some influencer online and they're in like 80s or 100, right? But when you're in your 30s, if you have an HRV in the 30s, you're actually doing pretty well. When you get in your 40s, if you have an HRV in the high 20s, you're still doing better than average, okay? So here's the thing. What happens when it's a 15? Well, it just depends. Is it a 15 after like a hard workout earlier that day? Because that sometimes does happen. But then on the subsequent days that follow, then it's actually a little bit higher because your body recovered and now it's recovered and it's higher. A 15 means that your body's stressed. That's all that it means. So it's stressed from fasting too much for that day, working out too hard, too hard of a cold plunge or sauna, um, too much stress at work or life. That, that's all. But it doesn't, again, even mean that it's a bad thing. It just means, do you recover? Because if it's a low HRV for multiple days, then that's not ideal. So hopefully that's helpful. Uh, I am going to be doing a whole course on biohacking. I'm using that in air quotes and anti-aging coming this September. So stay tuned. It's going to be a 100-person group that I work with these 100 people on their sleep and uh, biometrics from all the different devices. So it's going to be a ton of fun. I'm only going to do it once uh, this fall, but I can't wait to do it because um, this is the stuff that I love. So hopefully this was helpful. Hopefully today's show was helpful. I'll be back answering six more of our community's questions tomorrow. Take care, everyone. Have an amazing rest of your weekend.